last but not least, Samantha Lamphere, another senior in the biology program. And we're going to learn some very interesting stuff, I believe, about parasites and potential uses in treating autoimmune diseases. I learned uh, probably more new stuff reading yours, Sam, than uh, mo at least most of the other capstones, but that's just a reflection of my background. Take it away. So I'm really sorry for the people that may not want to hear about parasites, um, but I just found this topic really interesting and I wanted to delve in and see how parasites could be used in autoimmune diseases. So my thesis for this paper is with the continual study of parasites and their effects on some autoimmune diseases in humans, parasites could be proven as beneficial to human health. So the outline that I have prepared today and what I plan to discuss is the history between humans and parasites, what exactly are autoimmune diseases, studies that have used live parasites, um, such as inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, rheumatoid arthritis, RA, or multiple sclerosis, MS. Also, I would like to talk about an alternative to using live parasites, and then I will just conclude what I talked about in this presentation. So, parasites in humans have had a very long history. Um, parasites have been around for a very long time and are known to have caused humans to evolve over the years. And so while we adapt and change, Parasites are also adapting and changing to the environment that we put them in. So while they're changing, they are also commonly known as agents of disease. They cause many effects. Most of you probably know malaria. Well, malaria is a parasite and it can cause many deaths because and it can be trans transmitted by mosquitoes. And so according to Drisdell, some parasitic diseases are quick and lethal others bring slow decay, and others chip away at daily life. So while you may not know that you have it, you can see visible signs of it. And as a response to these parasitic infections, humans have evolved and adapted in some ways. As a result, we have developed diseases, such as sickle cell anemia, ovocytosis, and thalassemia. Thalassemia and ovocytosis and sickle cell anemia make the body or specifically the red blood cells inhabitable or uninhabitable for parasites to live because it makes it very dangerous where they most likely will end up being killed or they cannot complete their life cycle. So since these parasitic infections has caused us to evolve over time, um, what, could we possibly use parasites in another way? Autoimmune diseases. What exactly are they? They are the result of your immune system not being able to distinguish the difference between pathogens and antigens that you make in your own body. So as a result, the body attacks itself. And how exactly do parasites play a role in autoimmune diseases? It's believed through a hygiene hypothesis that as our country and many other countries became more industrialized and more sanitary and increased regulations, that parasites have decreased in those industrialized countries where are more commonly also found in underdeveloped countries. And when a parasite is in the body, it most likely uses a TH2 immune response, which is a response that promotes and prevents autoimmunity and anti-inflammatory responses. And most autoimmune diseases follow a separate path known as a TH1 or TH17 pathway which promotes inflammation and the body attacking itself. So one disease that I want to talk about is IBD. This is characterized by the continual inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract. There's two different types, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease or CD can affect any part of the GI tract. It appears as patches next to healthy areas and affects all layers of the bowel wall. But UC occurs only in the large intestine and the rectum. There are continuous patches and it only affects the inner lining of the wall and it's believed to affect one in 250 people. Helminths have been used to help treat patients with this. So in a study conducted by Joel Weinstock, he wanted to answer the question, how could parasitic infections improve health? So what he did was he infected pigs with helminths, specifically Trichurus suis. He let those eggs mature inside the pigs. He cultured the worms 
And then after the worms were cultured, he allowed the adult worms to reproduce those eggs. And those eggs were then used inside of humans. In the first trial that he did, he gave one patient 2,500 eggs that had Crohn's disease. And from this, he found that there were no adverse effects and that there was an improvement in disease symptoms. In the second trial that he conducted, he gave 29 patients with Crohn's disease live eggs every two weeks for a total of 24 weeks. From this, he found that nearly 80% of the patients had decrease in symptoms and 72% even went into remission. And for the third trial that he conducted, he found that 54 patients with ulcerative colitis um, were given, half of them were given a placebo and the other half were given the parasitic treatment of eggs. From this, he found that 43% of the people with Hellman's treatments improved while only 17% of the people with the placebo improved. So while this study may prove to be really beneficial and show the impact, the first two trials did not look at control groups or have any con control groups in there. So you couldn't really determine whether or not the parasitic infection improved um, the symptoms, but the third trial could. A second autoimmune disease that I looked at was rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is when you have inflammation in the joints and overexpression of cytokines. Cytokines are just cells of the immune system that signal other cells. So what do these cytokines do? They increase your white blood cell production, and as a result, they increase the level of osteoclasts. Osteoclasts are cells that break down bone. And so normally in a healthy person, they have a healthy balance of osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are cells that build the bone, and it's known to affect 41 out of 100,000 people. So there have been studies that have been conducted on rheumatoid arthritis in both humans and animals, but the animal models, they induce collagen-induced arthritis because it closely resembles RA. So in this study conducted by Dunit et al., he wanted to know if a parasitic molecule known as ES62 can influence the breakdown of bone to solve joint inflammation in mice that were induced with CIA. This parasitic molecule, ES62, is a glycoprotein that is derived from filarial worms and is known to prevent the progression and development of RA. So what he did was he treated mice with this ES62 product, but he also treated another group with a phosphate buffer saline solution, which acted as the control. And from this, he found that the mice with the ES62 product were less likely to develop arthritis, Mice with the PBS or the control group had a disease incidence of nearly 87.5%, while the mice treated with ES62 only had a disease incidence of 0%. Also from the study, he found that mice with the ES62 treatment had reduced infiltration of inflammatory cells in their body, and there was also a decrease in bone and cartilage destruction. So from this study, he found that in this case, the parasitic eggs or treatment was really effective in helping some of the patients um, by preventing the breakdown of bone and helping relieve some of their symptoms. So a third autoimmune disease that I looked at in my paper is multiple sclerosis, or MS. MS is caused by the immune response acting, acting against the myelin sheath um, that protects and surrounds neurons. And when it acts against it, it degrades its myelin sheath, which causes neurodegeneration. So as a result, this can impair vision, coordination, movement, and ultimately can result in paralysis. This disease is known to affect more than two, mil two million people. So some more trials have been conducted on patients with this disease, and they have also induced experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, or EAE, which I will refer to in the next study, um, because this closely resembles the injury that is seen to the myelin sheath in multiple sclerosis. So, a study conducted by Gruden Mo Sehan et al. found and wanted to know how Trichinella spiralis, um, a worm that suppresses and affects EAE. So, what they did is they split the rats up into two groups one infected with the eggs and one uninfected. And then they then split each group up into untreated and one induced with EAE. 
So when they induced EAE in with rats, they also wanted to infect the rats that were going to be infected at the same time because they wanted the life cycle and the worm um, and the development of the symptoms to occur at the same time. And from this study, they found that at the end of the 25th day, that uninfected EAE rats developed severe disease. By the 28th day, infected mice with EAE had signs of disease, but the symptoms were severely reduced. And when they transplanted these cells um, from uninfected EAE mice, or the control group, and placed them inside of healthy rats, they found that the rats developed disease symptoms within nine to 13 days. But when they took cells from the helminth infected um, rats that had EAE, they found that in, seven, in 13 out of the 20 rats, there was complete protection from EAE development. And the seven rats that didn't have complete protection, they had reduced clinical signs and the disease was less severe. From the study, they also found that there was more cellular infiltration of cells and neurons, but in the treated group, there was less cellular infiltration. And this graph, it just shows that certain cell, um, cell types increase um, when parasitized and helps promote um, fight against uh, inflammation and the effects that come because of autoimmune diseases. So while we've been using live parasites to infect patients to see if they could help improve symptoms, there's also an alternative. This alternative is using proteins or products that are derived from parasites. So why would people maybe want to use these products instead? Well, patients have the fear that they're going to develop this parasitic disease or this parasitic infection could cause them to become infected. So they would prefer something else. Also, this parasitic product could be made into pill form, which ultimately is less time consuming, is less costly, and it can be mass produced to a large number of people. Whereas having these studies, you can't really do that. So an example of one of these alternative products is called cystatin. So this protein product is a protease inhibitor. And protease is just a molecule that breaks down protein in the body. So this molecule is important for antigen processing, protein catabolism, and inflammation. So what it does is it targets white blood cells that dampen the immune response and help with autoimmunity. It has also been shown to help um, mice with colitis. So what it does is it suppresses inflammation, it decreases epithelial damage, it decreases immune cells from infiltrating parts of the intestine, and has many other beneficial effects. A second molecule that I would like to look at really quickly is fasciola hepatica excretory secretory product. So this is from a common liver fluke. It's shown to be helpful in EAE, and also is important for immune defense against viruses, fungi, and bacteria. And what it does is it increases cytokines, or those cells that fight the inflammatory response and alleviates the immune response. So these are only just two of the examples that I showed you on this page. There are many other examples that I just, time permitting, did not have to be able to talk to you about. Um, but these products have been proven so far in mice that they can be beneficial. So today, I've talked to you about how we have shared a long evolutionary history with parasites and how they have impacted us and have caused us to change. And from this, we are trying to find a way to fight back against the parasites in a way to see if we can use parasites as a potential treatment by either using live parasites or maybe a safer option for some people are parasite-derived products. And even though there's these studies, more studies need to be conducted because some factors like not having a control group or maybe having small sample sizes um, need to be accounted for. And with more studies, they could show the effects that it can have and really reinforce what some of these studies have shown. 